As part of preparing for the Ramadan season, the University of Lagos Muslim Alumni has kept the tradition of hosting Nigerians to a pre-Ramadan annual lecture. Beyond preparing spiritually for the month, it has in successive years addressed trending and contemporary issues in the society. <laughs> The 2024 edition was not exception as the theme for the lecture was tagged Economic Reforms for Nigerian Challenges and Prospects for the Future. I commend UMA for the painstaking effort to organize and sustain this program in the last 29 years. It is indeed a great feat and I pray Allah to reward you and support you to keep the program going for, for as long as you wish. I join you and the generality of Muslims worldwide to give thanks to Allah for preserving our lives till now and pray to him to spare our lives to witness and observe the fast approaching Ramadan in good state of health and prosperity. Amen. As is usual with Umar, this period of the year affords us another opportunity to reflect on the state of our nation by examining contemporary issues of national concern and provide ideas that could help to promote a sustainable socioeconomic development of our dear nation. Economic reforms for Nigeria, challenges and prospects for the future. is a seemingly tool to killing two bears with one stone. It attempts to take care of today with a view to securing a better future for our people. Furthermore, the theme of guest speaker and discussants you have assembled is also formidable. It is a real combination of academics and practitioners. And I have no doubt that our policy makers and indeed, everyone here and outside will find the conversation beneficial and take away useful knowledge and lessons. She has asked me to express her great delight on behalf of the entire University of Lagos community to welcome you all to this 29th edition of the Pre-Ramadan Lecture of the University of Lagos Muslim Alumni Association. This is because for us, this is a very remarkable moment. By the fact that this lecture is the 29th edition, we believe that the story is told already of how significant this particular event is with an average of one lecture every year. I know that in very rare cases, you can have two Ramadan in one uh, Gregorian calendar year, but usually it's just one in a year, which means that roughly we have been about this pre-Ramadan lecture for over 25 years, for over a quarter of a century. Nigeria represents, for many of us, a paradox. It's the 32nd largest in terms of large man's country in the world. So there's a lot of land that I can put to use. The eighth largest exporter of crude oil, the 10 largest exporter of um, gas. Quite a lot of natural resources, whether you're talking gold, lithium, bitumen, probably the second the largest in the world. A coastline of well over 850 kilometers. That means you, could, you know, beaches and what people go to the Caribbean for, uh, you, act you actually could do that here. And over 14 million hectares of inland water, including the Niger and River Benue. 200 million, 220 million vibrant energetic individuals, diverse culture, a number of times we disagree, but in our diversity, there should be strength. 
And of course, we have a youthful bulge. About 70% of us are below the age of 35. And about 96% of us were not born or were born after the Civil War. So it's quite a very youthful population. The consumers of the future, the workforce of the future. Over 70 million agricultural land, which of course we've put to different uses, cocoa and etc. And many other positive things you can think about. But also on the flip side, the ease and cost of doing business is terrible. It's not easy to do business there. It's expensive to do business there. Uh, for most organizations, electricity supply is the additional 35% extra cost. Security is the additional 22% extra cost. And so when you lay on 35% power, 22, 25% security, your product can be competitive with um, those in other climes. Corruption continues to be an issue and adherence to the rule of law continues to be challenging. And so we've seen that leading to low investment. In the last six or seven years, na the nation has not received up to a billion dollar of foreign direct um, investment. So that is the paradox. But what for me is a bit more concerning is that we, we play too much. We don't take ourselves serious enough, and there's really no sense of urgency. As far as I know, we've been talking about nev never expect power always. In 2016, Egypt signed a deal with Siemens, and in three years, they delivered 14.4 gig gigawatt extra power. Nigeria signed a deal in 2018 with same Siemens. We're still waiting. We've been importing petrol for so long, and we're doing turnaround maintenance of our refineries yet for so long. Uh, hopefully, Dangote refinery will come upstream. And two weeks ago, NMPC informed us that within a decade, we're likely to stop importing PMS. We said cost of governance is expensive. But in 2012, Orosaye report was submitted. Then we had about 500 MDAs. Today we have over 900 MDAs. The last time inflation was a single digit was 2017 January. And that was also about the same time that farmers said that clashes became real issue. And so you ask ourselves, are we really serious? The last time or the last period we recorded high growth in terms of GDP was before pipeline vandalization, was before militancy in the South-South. The, there's rapid urbanization at 53%, but we're not investing in infrastructure for the urban community. We want businesses to thrive. We want investors to come in. Yet last year, between Adamawa and Uyo, we had 154 checkpoints. So we could say there's insecurity, maybe. But two weeks ago, between Agbara and Seme, 46 checkpoints, just two weeks ago. So there are hard issues, but there are also soft issues that we can solve easily. Nigeria is the only country that I know since I've been traveling that the airport, you will have a DSS check, you have a immigration check. In most countries, just one collaborative check. And according to Taiwo Yodele, uh, the chair of the Fiscal Police Commission, motorists pay 73 taxes to move their goods from the north to the south. And you wonder why things are expensive. Insecurity has chased farmers away in the last two years. Flooding has 
affected quite a number of farm, farmland. And we wonder why there is food crisis today. And so one begins to think that perhaps one of the major issues we have is the absence of system thinking. We think in silos, and there's also the lack of second order thinking. You know, second order thinking is when you think that what I've, this action I'm taking, what other actions will lead, lead to? What will it cause? Pre Buhari administration, we've been talking about a papa pork uh, decongestion trailers on the on those highways a decade after we are still talking about our port the congestion trailers on the highway and then we wonder why export has not been going fast and so some of our problems are structural but most of our problems are really due to our own selfishness the lack of consequences the little attempt at system thinking and the very low second order thinking. The stage was set for experts to take the center stage. In his presentation, Mr. Neyu Yusuf, Chairman Nigeria Economic Summit Group, asked several rhetorical questions, broadening our powers, insecurity, migration, high level of inequalities, summarizing it up with lack of consequences as the main bane of economic hardship in the society. To complement his presentation, Sheikh Daoud Afanla Elea provided some financial in local parlance in Yoruba. In Islam, we have to say that we have to say that we have to say that we have to say Wa ala sabi kirami Wa ala rusili li jamala Nisho jalo bena ni ute Una lo gawa Bola nabi se se joba eto filisi Ka kopi mbe Baba ya kubwana la chima Kilo de china jira ukukumu Foto kopi lara nabi wa muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Fil iktisodiya Fil siyasa Fil ta'alim Education. In every other thing that we are doing. Why don't we copy what the Prophet has already mentioned for us? Why don't we copy what the Prophet has already mentioned for us? Why don't we copy what the Prophet has already mentioned for us? Why don't we copy for everything we are doing, both economics, education? Why don't we copy what the Prophet has already mentioned for us? Why don't we copy what the Prophet has already mentioned for us? And he also joined us to do good when he was alive. All this is under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way the economy was during the life of the Prophet is what we should try to copy as Nigerians today. أرني لا تجعل يدك مغلولة على أن إلى أنكك ولا تبسطها كل البسط فتقعد ملوما هضورا ولا تجعل يدك مغلولة إلى أنكك ولا تبسطها كل البسط فتقعد ملوما مهضورا إن ربك يبسط الرزق لما يشاء ويقدر إنه كان بعباده خبيرا بصيرا لو توقفنا على هاتين الهايتين الكريمتين نكتفي بهداية الله تابني أدلو يا مجنون فتتوا سيقون تفك بوي لوري أن يكتشي أن بروفيسور واتي سوليك in Nigeria, in Babo, in Nigeria, in the city of Kani, 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 
Nikwe uti mbela kumi nina Masa huni jebe La taj'al yadaka maglulatan ila unkika Maka wasorun bayi Nikwe ulikwe ulikwe umbara mbo Omare mbo Yau rembo Ebi rembo Kwa mba na u owa kawasorun Uwe lolo mfikwa masa huni jebe Wala tebu sota haku lalbasiti Ma wabu ya ya koma na ba nti na uka kinisi Nibi guwa wa hafalat Nibi guwa se ya u Aku ma ba ba uru Facebook E yu na to tanya lu sila yi Kini fa u si Nigeria ba nti na uo da Am biyolo u ninu Am batalika nuje Am kuba nuje be ni ti orona Uyo kankan be um tuli awan ti okbo yi rada do not spend extravagantly. Facebook. Facebook. The discussant took turns to further elucidate the topic to the delight of the very attentive audience. What is it that is actually plaguing us at the moment? Why are we crying? What is the issue? And the issue range from increase in fuel price, okay? And this inf increase in fuel price has resulted in inflation, which has affected a number of products and services across Nigeria. Because as a people, anything that affects fuel price affects every other thing. That's our behavior, okay? Also, we talked about terrorism, kidnapping, insurgency, banditry, and its effects on food production. And I ask, did this bandit and these kidnappers, did they come from another country? Are they not Nigerians? So they are our brothers, my brothers, and your brothers, and our sisters, and our neighbor. And we know them, and we are not reporting them. So what do we expect? Magic? It won't happen. We have to be proactive. We can't leave all of this to just law enforcement. We have to do something different. The argument that Nigeria is an oil-producing nation, so we should have all the oil cheap the way we want won't happen because we're importing um, finished product, PMS, AGO, we're importing everything. And every other nation in the world is importing its own inflation wholesale. So we are importing their inflation. While they are exporting the inflation, we are busy importing the inflation from other countries. So I say globally between harvest and, uh, and retail, in Nigeria, but I, you, know, you spoke so much about our, about our agriculture. But for us, as a nation, as compared to other countries of the world, countries in the world that have led in terms of agriculture, between harvest and retail, they lost 14% of their produce. Nigeria lost a whooping 40%. So how do we want to continue to feed 200 million people with primitive equipment? Whole and cutlasses to feed 200, 200 million people plus. It's not possible. Country in abundance, but with a lot of social ills that has made us to be classified as the poverty capital in the world. So with all this scenario, we see that there is need for reform. We cannot run away from economic reform. However, what are the kind of reform that we need to do what are the challenges confronting our reform in the past and even the present one? And how do we get over these challenges? We have had various reforms in the past. We have SAP by Babangida. We had needs. We have transformation agenda. They all have lofty objectives. But how far have we been able to achieve these objectives? Those are the challenges that we have to throw to ourselves. Why have we not achieved the objectives of these various reforms? One of the things I have noted for our inability to achieve our objective is one, the objectives of the reforms 
seems to be imposed on us. The event could not have been concluded without the special guest of honor, al Aji Kashim Shetima, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, represented by Dr. Akim Baba Ahmed. I want to meet your presence uh, for your individual effort in ensuring that Nigeria returns to its glory days. Uh, we are sure that, uh, just like you mentioned, uh, the important year is taking further uh, to the fall of our decision makers and policy makers to ensure that all of the things that have been contributed here today reach enough to be included as part of the deliberation for our policymakers to drive our country to uh, the public land. To the last of law, to the vice president, and our administration, represented by the advisor of the school matter, Dr. Ahmed. What are the takeaways from the lecture? We should adjust our spendings. We should um, we should pray for our leaders and um, find ways to make things better for people around us. Ramadan is approaching, so we should show more love and spread goodness and spread joy and spread um, um, and spread good things around. Just make people happy around you. The little that you have, give to people. Share. Satisfied. I feel fulfilled because the intention of the at the beginning of planning was to sensitize our people, especially looking at what we have now in Nigeria, as if the policies are not working, as if everything is so tough, there is no blue line in the horizon. So we feel that it is the responsibility of Muslims, particularly those of us that finished from the University of Lagos, to sensitize our people to know how, what, and when to do the right thing. Take away from this. For me, in close the fact that, yes, we have challenges, but reforms are required in order for us to develop. And reforms usually come with some pains and challenges. Number two, it's also there's clarity as to where we, we are headed. The current challenges that we are experiencing are not just going to be going to waste. They will prepare the country for all to maximize our potentials. And I think the, fourth, the third and the final one for me as Muslims, we must keep hope alive. I benefited in the aspect of the economy of the country, what we are supposed to do, the do's and don'ts, and the things we even spend our money on flamboyantly, we were advised that we should be watchful, be careful on whatever we do. We should try and be uh, more uh, vigilant in what we do, and then we should be stronger in our religion. The elaborate ceremony was laced with presentation of plaques to the guests and lecturers. We congratulate the executive committee and the entire membership of UMA for a successful 2024 pre-Ramadan lecture. Amen.